What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world? This is Chris, and this is my channel, Barn on 11970. And thanks for taking the time to check out this video, and hopefully you will learn how to make your own Oregon pyramids. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of comments about people asking me, you know, where I get my stuff, what resins I use, things like that. So I figured instead of just doing a comment, I thought the best thing to do would make a video and teach you guys how to make them. Now, it took me a while to learn how to do these properly because a lot of YouTube videos, they'll show you what to do, but they don't really explain everything in full detail. So if you don't know what you're looking at, it's not going to teach you anything. I mean, you're not going to learn how to repair a car by just watching a person and they're fixing an engine. If they don't explain what they're doing, what parts they need, what tools they need, you're only getting part of the picture. So... I found that from what people tell me, I'm very good at educating people how to do things. I'm a good teacher from what I've been told. I could be wrong, but um, I'm going to explain how to do it, where you can get certain items, and then you'll be on your way to making your own if you no longer want to buy Oregon pyramids or Oregon devices from other people. Because basically, if you go on eBay, this is the typical pyramid that you will see. This isn't one of mine. What they do is they put a couple of stones, like there's a stone there, there's a stone there, there's a little stone there. They, they sporadically put little amounts of stones, and they pile in a bunch of metal. Now, this is what they claim to be copper. All that is is a copper-coated Brillo pad, which is basically steel with some copper, and then they use a lot of aluminum. Why? Because it's cheap. So, believe it or not, this, when I bought this a couple of years ago before I started making them, this cost me $45 on eBay. Now, I'm going to show you the typical ones that I make and the difference. Because the proper way to make Oregon pyramids, if you're so inclined to want to make them, is they have to be in layers. They have to be inorganic and organic or other, the other way around, organic, inorganic. It has to be layers. Think of it like a filtration system. So if it's just sporadically placed all over the place, like this, it's not going to have the same effect as this. Now, when they talk about organic materials, they're talking about things like you can use crystals and stones. Now, the thing that most people who don't research this stuff and automatically dismiss it find is what they call strange or crazy, is they don't believe that everything actually has energy. Well, energy is nothing more than vibration condensed. And the lower the vibration, the more solid something appears. Because even if you look at a rock under a electron microscope, you're going to see it broken down to its molecules, which is nothing more than atoms, which is light, and light is energy, and it's moving. But because it's such a lower vibration, and there's so much of those atoms, because of magnetism brought together, you're going to give the illusion of solid. And that's why something like a light bulb is going to kind of move around, like a fluorescent light or a neon light. It, it has a higher vibration, so it's going to admit omit better and faster and more noticeable energy. So everything in the universe is electric and it's held together through magnetism. So what the people who don't want to research this stuff will never understand is crystals and stones have energy. Depending on the type of stone it is, it will have different types of energies. When they talk about energy, it's nothing more than the vibration coming from the movement of the particular atoms that compose of that particular stone or crystal or what have you. So if people researched history, things like quartz crystals, and this is an is a natural, it's actually what's called a, a twin. It's a terminated crystal. The reason they call it terminated is you see it, it comes to a natural point. This hasn't been cut. It hasn't been done. It hasn't been altered in any way. This is how Real quartz crystals grow in nature. So when you see a point at the end, it's called a terminated crystal. If it had a point on both ends, it's a double terminated. Those are actually very expensive. But as you could see, it's clear. And they used to use crystals in the original radios because they would attach a copper wire to a quartz crystal and it would emit energy. So if you research these things, they do have energy. That's why if you know anything about liquid crystal televisions, it has crystals in it. If you know about lasers, they use rubies. So people want to think, oh, well, you're just making this. It's a large paperweight and it's full of rocks. Well, no, that's not the case. The rocks 
that they're talk talking about are things like, for example, you'll find on the street, like granite. It's all over the place. But if you even know about your computer, your computer, especially the electronic components, are made of primarily either copper, which is a metal, and you have silicone, which is a form of quartz. The majority of the earth is, is primarily silicone. I mean, you, if you walk on sand, you're walking on quartz crystal so crystals have energy people just think when they hear that that word they're so sick of the new age kind of stuff they think oh it's just magic it's it's hocus pocus when it's nothing more than simple science that everything broken down to its molecular structure will have a form of energy it depends on the vibration of that energy the lower the vibration the more solid the higher vibration the more ethereal it will become so the way it works is, depending on the different types of crystals, you start out with either organic or inorganic. It doesn't really matter. The inorganic are the metals. Now, here's the thing that you've got to know about. The majority of people that make these use this. Now, you notice this has not been touched because when I first started learning about this stuff, I bought all this stuff not knowing what I was doing until I researched it further. Aluminum is cheap, but it's not what you really want to use. The things that I use and what I recommend if you're making these is like, for example, these, that is actual copper nuggets. I also have steel shavings. This is real steel that they make into shavings. You can even use, you can go to your local stores and I'll just cover the name brand so it doesn't matter because I'm not trying to promote any products. These are copper coated steel BBs. So you want to use real metals because they're going to they're gonna be better conductors of electricity and energy. That's why we have copper wires. And that's why if you look in your computer, there is actual gold. Because gold, silver, copper, those kind of metals are very high conductors of electricity. The cheaper the metal, the better, the worse it's going to be. So a lot of people, to try and make it seem like they're doing cheap prices on their pyramids, they use like this. Like I said, this one... They're using just a copper Brillo pad, a copper coated steel Brillo pad, and they use a bunch of other stuff. And that's why you'll see in most pyramids, you'll see a lot of this color because that's aluminum shavings. Here's another thing that I buy, and I recommend if you make a bunch or if you get into your own business making them for your friends and family, you buy in bulk. This here is five pounds, or I think it's either five or ten pounds, or actually five pounds because I have two bags of it. This is solid brass shavings so you want to use the real metals so the way an oregon pyramid is supposed to be created is you start out with either inorganic or organic materials and you go one after the other until you've completed what you want so people always ask what kind of molds do i use well you don't want any kind of cheap plastic mold or something made out of cardboard because first of all it won't last very long and with the resin Sometimes you have to leave it in there for hours at a time. You want something made of metal. So here is the typical, there's different sizes, but this is the typical pyramid mold. Now you can buy these. I get them on eBay. If you go and you hit in the search engine uh, pyramid shaped candle molds, you will see these. Now, there are some, because they're called candle molds, that have the hole in them, which you obviously don't want because every all the resin will leak through. So you want to find the ones where they actually have this little hole here closed in. And the reason for the hole is some people use these to make candles, and you want the wick to be able to go through. So uh, they have tiny ones. I don't know if I have any others in front of me now. Uh, but they have ones that are as far as wide as 12 inches wide. They can get a little expensive. Like this mold itself, just this one, is roughly about 18 to $20. And here's the thing you have to be very careful about. One scratch in here, and it will show up on every pyramid that you make. So you have to be very careful in how you get these out. So one of the things that I am definitely going to recommend, and again, I'm not trying to promote any products, this is silicone release. This is a spray, and when you're ready to start your pyramid before you mix anything together, you're gonna spray a coating of this inside your mold. What that's gonna do is, when the mold starts to harden, it will separate from the molding because and I'll tell you what kind of um, resin that I use, because if you buy cheap resin, or if you don't use this release, what will happen is, and I found this out the hard way in the beginning, is your mold will end up trapping your pyramid inside and you can't get it out. So you'll destroy this. 
and then if you try and use a knife to dig around it, you're going to scratch it. Any little scratch, you basically have to throw these out. So you have to be careful with that. So the way to clean these, just to show, because you'll see, I just made one recently, and you'll see where the edge is. The way to use the clean these is you get a soft rag, and you get some acetone. And you just take the acetone, place it on the rag, and just wipe this off until it all comes off. It usually takes about five minutes to clean it, but you don't want to scrape at it because, again, any scrapes in this metal will show up on the pyramid. Okay, so as far as the resin is concerned, there's different types of resins. You get what you pay for. So you don't want the cheap stuff because I, I found through trial and error that when you use the cheaper resins, they tend to either be very cloudy, uh, they take... 10 times longer to dry. Um, they can get stuck in the mold. Even if you use the release, I've had that problem where even with the release, it wouldn't come out of the mold. So this stuff is going to be expensive. The reason I'm not going to show it is I have a five gallon bucket and I didn't feel like lugging that up the stairs. But what I use, and you could write this down, so pause it if you need a pen and paper, is you're going to get what I use is clear polyester resin. A lot of people use the casting resin. It's cheaper. I don't trust it, and with when you use the type of resin that I use is the clear polyester resin. That's actually what they coat surfboards with. So it's very clear, and it dries a hundred times faster. Literally, it will take about an hour per layer of the cheap resin for each to dry. With the um, stuff that I use, usually within 20 minutes. So you're taking a lot less time. So the way you're going to do this is you're going to start out with your mold, you're going to spray your silicone release. You're going to take, you're obviously going to need a measuring cup. Now, this is the way I go as far as what, this is the hardener. This usually comes with the resin that you buy, so you don't have to worry about buying this separately. But I've got it down to a science that for every cup of resin that you put in, you need approximately 30 drops per cup. So if you use half a cup, it's 15 drops, you, you go accordingly. So some people, they pour so much of it in. The problem with that is if you add too much hardener, it overheats the resin. And then, of course, when you have different crystals and stones, rocks can retain heat. And then what you can end up with is cracks in your pyramid. So if you've ever tried to make them and you see those cracks start forming, it's because you've added too much of the hardener and it's overheating the resin. A way that you can oh, to stop that is you can actually have like a bucket of ice water and have this kind of hover in it a little bit, but that will rust the, rust the metal over time. Um, you need obviously something to stir. You don't want to use plastic because the resin will melt the plastic. A lot of people don't know that. So what I like to use is what these are are bamboo skewers. You can buy these at the dollar store. You get a hundred of them for a dollar and you use these to mix the resin. So what you're going to do is... You always got to start out with a little bit of resin at first, because remember, this is upside down. So you're actually doing everything upside down. So you're not going to need a lot of resin when you start out. So you're going to need, when you first start out, if it's like this size, and this is a five inch pyramid, um, you're going to use maybe a quarter of a cup at best, and you're going to put in your stones. Now, it depends on what you have. Like These are, for example, and these are beautiful, but they're expensive. These are malachite stones. You could use these. Um, these are what's called tumbled, which means they take the natural stone, put it in a tumbler, and it gives that shiny appearance. Now, it doesn't matter if you use the natural stone or the tumbled. It basically is just your preference of how you want it to look. So all you're going to do is you mix the resin probably for about a good minute, minute and a half. Key thing, you don't want to do this indoors because the resin, while it's starting to dry, emits vapors. And if you try and do it in your house, you're going to smell it. It's not healthy. So do this outdoors and you should use a mask. That's something I would recommend. So if you have one of those little hospital mask things or whatever, use that. But definitely do this outside. Do not do it indoors. Another thing, you want to make sure the temperature outside is at least 70 degrees. The reason being is if it's under 70 degrees, the resin will take a lot longer to dry. It may not dry at all, and it will come out very cloudy. So you want to make sure if you want it to stay nice and clear, because as you could see how clear these are, you could see all the stones. 
you want to make sure it's done at the proper temperatures. So when you put your amount of your hardener into here, you just mix it up for about a minute or two until you see all the little cloudiness disappear. Don't mix it too hard. If you mix it too hard and too fast, it's going to form a lot of bubbles. So if you take your time with it, the less bubbles, the more attractive it's going to be. And again, I'll show you, if you notice, there are no bubbles. So you want to do things right. And what happens is you're basically doing it in layers. So when you do the first layer, what you always do is before you put the stones in, put a little bit of the resin in first. Because if you just put the stones in and put the resin on top of it, it could create bubbles underneath. And then if you don't notice them, next thing you know, it looks like you have an aquarium. So if you put a little resin in first and then put in the stones, you're going to eliminate that problem. And then you could take your skewer, kind of move it around, get the bubbles out. But then once you do the first layer, you have to wait for it to dry. Now, here's the tricky part. You do not want it to dry completely because if, it, if you wait too long, what happens is the edges, because of this resin release, will start to separate from the molding. And that means when you pour the next layer, it's going to seep right through. So basically what you want to do is have a consistency where you can take your skewer and tap it. And it almost feels like if you've ever made pudding or jello, uh, that kind of like you can't poke it through unless you do a lot of pressure. So once you feel it's that kind of solid, where it's not completely solid, but it's no longer liquid, that's when you do the next layer. So these do take time. And that's one of the reasons. And again, I'll show this one. It's the only one I have. But that's not mine. There's a reason why this looks the way it does, because basically what they did was they did one layer where they put the quartz crystal and wrapped it with copper wire, and then they, they just dumped a whole bunch of metal and dropped a couple of stones here and there. Like I say, you get what you pay for. So it's basically, depending on how many layers you do, it can take anywhere from three to six hours to make one if you do it the proper way. So... Um, again, make sure you use the right metals. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put in the description box below, um, there's a website that has information on all different types of stones, what type of energies they have, what they're best used for. I use that all the time. There's like hundreds of different stones. It talks about them, tells you what their energies are. And again, the energy I'm talking about is nothing more than a vibration. Your body emits energy, vibrations. That's why, for example, if somebody takes their fingernails and goes down a chalkboard, you can actually cringe. Well, it didn't physically touch you. What it did was the sound coming from that scratching interfered with your vibration reception. It's almost like, for example, if you have an AM radio and you're listening to it in your car and you go under a bridge and all of a sudden there's static. It just means there was something that interrupted the signal. So that's all that is. It's not magic. It's not superstition. And, and those who want to just dismiss this stuff because it sounds crazy, they're people who are just not ready enough to actually research and see that almost every single electronic device that they use has crystals in them. It's just they condense them into powder form and turn them into things like computer chips. That's silicone. I'm sure you've heard of silicone. That's a form of quartz. And if you know anything about the history of lasers and radios, they actually attached rubies, quartzes, and other materials. And some people will just not want to educate themselves. So they'll say things like, oh, it's just a bunch of rocks. Well, if you don't think a bunch of rocks have value, well, if you're married, tell your wife to give her ring back and tell me how much she'll just say, oh, okay, well, it's just a rock. How about gold? I bet if you found a gold nugget on the ground, you'd be very happy about that. Just a rock, isn't it? When you talk about nuclear weapons, remember how they used uranium and plutonium? Well, those are rocks. They just have energetic properties. So the further we get separated from nature, the more ridiculous some people think what is just science and nature really is. So if you're making these, who cares if your family thinks, oh, it's crazy, oh, it's this, it's that. That just That's their way of saying, hi, I am too ignorant to research. I automatically dismiss things without checking into them, and it angers me that you're trying to do something that I may be either too lazy or incapable of figuring out. So you're making these for yourself. So if you make them right, 
I mean, I add things like the dye. You can get regular ink dye, the colored dyes. I add sparkles because a lot of women get these, so it makes it look a little prettier. I even add like little design pendants. You can get these on eBay. You look under um, jewelry pendants. Just make sure there's no plastic. You want only metal. So the ones that I use are either brass, steel, copper. It depends. Bronze. You don't want plastic. You don't want wood unless you're using, for example, um, petrified wood. That actually can be used in these in these pyramids. That would be considered, excuse me, considered an organic material. So that's basically it. Um, basically, once this is in the mold, another thing you can do when you're done, if you do, especially if you're doing this outside on a sunny day. Place it in direct sunlight because the heat of the sun will help dry the resin faster. And just make sure you stick around because this is a project where you have to stay there the whole time because you don't want a fly to, to fly into it. You don't want like a leaf to fall into it. You basically got to babysit it the whole time while you're doing it. So it is an activity that can take sometimes all day depending on the type that you're making, but it's a lot of fun. That's why I ended up turning this into a business. This was once a hobby for me. I just started making because I thought it was relaxing. And then people started seeing my work and they wanted to buy them. So I decided to make my own little business, but I'm my own home business. I get to sit outside in the beautiful sun, spend hours making beautiful things. So even if people don't want to believe in what they're capable of, it's work of art. So if you make these right and you do your patience, you can go from this, which is just thrown together, to something like this, that could be a work of art. And it basically depends on your different points of view. It's a, it's your different thoughts. I'll show you like another one. I, I made a video the other day, but you see this one, I used a um, citrine crystal point. I added different types of metals. So it, it really depends on your imagination. It will go any way you want it to. So think of it, especially if you have an artistic ability, you know, you can create beautiful works of art. But these are functional. Whether people believe in it or not is irrelevant, and I'm not here to try and convince people that are just going to be too stubborn to want to learn anything new. So hopefully that answers all the questions. Obviously, if you have more questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to try and answer them. Good luck with it. Take your time. Don't get frustrated, because believe me when I say I've had to throw out many of these trying through trial and error how to do this the right way. So if you listen to the way I, I showed how to do it, that should eliminate a lot of problems. Just don't rush, take your time, and let it set overnight before you try and take it out. Because if you take it out too early, it's going to be tacky. Uh, you can get thumbprints on it. It might get stuck to the sides of the mold. A lot of times you're excited to see what you want to put. And don't forget, if you're going to use things like this, or other kind of trinkets. Remember, this is upside down. So let's say you decided to want to put like silver quarters in it or something. Um, make sure you place them in upside down. Otherwise, when they come out, then they'll be permanently upside down. So keep that in mind when you're making these. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Check out the link below if you want to see my web store and all the things that I have if you don't want to make your own. Um, and also, I will post the link to that crystal website that I found that will give you all the meanings of each crystal so you know what to get and have fun with it. Um, the initial cost is it's going to spend you're going to spend a lot of money. Just a gallon of the resin alone is going to cost you about 70 to $90. Um, that's not including all the metals that you buy, all the stones that you buy, the uh, different types of molds. But if you buy in bulk and you plan on either making a business out of it or, you know, making a bunch for family as presents and things, if you buy it in bulk, you save a lot of money. But it will be initially expensive. So keep that in mind. All right. You're looking at investing. If you do it the right way, it, your initial investment would probably be anywhere from three to five hundred dollars. That's just the price you pay for doing things the right way. Or you could do it the cheap way and uh, spend half that and just not make it look as nice. So that's up to you. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have a great day. Peace.